Hello, I'm Gina Bedrosian. Greetings from Moorings Presbyterian Church, Naples, Florida. We'd like to share two Mother's Day videos with you. The first regarding preparation for that special Mother's Day in which we recognize our mothers, daughters, and those special women who raised us. The second has music, scripture, song, poetry, and other things that will help us to remember this special day. Please check online at mooringschurch.org for service times. Usually the main service is 10 on Sunday. For additional service times and holidays, be sure to check the website. Please feel free to share this with your friends and neighbors. Many, many church members work together to make this beautiful set of videos, and we hope you enjoy them and use them from year to year. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Bye-bye. Greetings, I'm Alicia Rowland, the Director of Christian Education for Children and Youth here at Moorings Presbyterian Church. And we are excited to share with you a few ideas and ways in which you can celebrate the women in your life for Mother's Day. Gina Bedrosian has different ways in which you can dress up your table. Whether it is dining outdoors or having a fancy meal at the dining room table. Chef Evie has three great brunch recipes to share with us, and Mary Hook has some fun ways to capture a child's handprint. If you haven't already done so, you can go to our church website and download the recipe for today. And now, I'd like to introduce Mary Hook, my mom, my best friend, my mentor, who not only raised me and my three siblings, but countless others, and continues to influence and bless the lives of the children and family here at Maurice Presbyterian Church. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Mary Hook, and I'd love to share with you some simple and fun ways to make Mother's Day greetings with your child or grandchild. I've made a few different things at the, in the Maureen's nursery. This is a cute little butterfly that we did with their handprints. It's fun to see how their hands grow. This is a little flower pot that we made with their handprints and decorated it with a bow and so forth. But I'd like to share a simple way to make a beautiful little card that you could make at home with supplies that you have. You can get colored construction paper or just use plain white typing paper and let them decorate it in different colors. You have crayons and markers so that they can draw and color and make designs that they want. And we did it with cutting their hands out. I love to draw their hands on a little piece of paper, fold it in half, cut it out, and then you have two handprints. You can put it on the edge of the fold, and then you have their hands double like that. Or cut them out and put them in the center of the card. This is a little card that we made with their hands. We traced them on a piece of construction paper. We cut them out. You could have scissors that they could cut out their own, or you could cut them out for them. We placed a cute little poem in the center. You can print this yourself, have them print it, or make it with your copy machine. This little poem says, mothers hold their children's hands for a while, but God keeps them in their hearts forever with love. And then they can sign their name. It's so much fun to let them sign their little name on themselves. And then you can see how their signature changes through their, as they grow up. So today we're going to trace their hands, cut them out, glue them on a piece of construction paper. Then we're gonna place the heart in the center and we're going to make the card. Then they can decorate the outside. 
As they're older, they can decorate it themselves, the inside and the outside in any way that they like. This is just a few and simple ways to make a lovely little Mother's Day card for anyone that you need to give one to. Thank you so much for joining me and please have a wonderful Mother's Day. Hi, I'm Chef Evie Vigiani. I'm here to help make a video for the Mother's Day celebration at the Moorings Presbyterian Church in Naples, Florida. Today we're going to do some fun, easy recipes for Mother's Day that the children would be uh, able to do on their own or have a little assistance from an adult. We're going to first start with a baked oatmeal uh, breakfast and we are going to have it has raisins <clears throat> or you can use cranberry cranberries uh, you could also use some dried uh, fruits um, dried um, blueberries raspberries strawberries and you're just going to put them in some a bowl with some uh, water and you're going to microwave it for three minutes or you can use oil water. Mm, pardon me. We'll also have some quick oats. You can use old fashioned oats or whatever you have on hand. And I have some um, uh, turban of um, sugar. You can use brown sugar, white sugar, coconut sugar, whatever kind of sugar works for you. And then we have some nice warm spices, cinnamon. You can't have too much cinnamon nutmeg and ginger and I always say this is what the recipe calls for and I always tell people that a recipe is um, just a guideline and if you don't like ginger you don't like nutmeg just leave them out and you could just use cinnamon also calls for a little bit of salt whatever salt you have we're going to use sea salt today you can use kosher table salt we have a medium-sized apple, and we have some spray for our pan. We're going to use some pecans, and we're using uh, oat milk today. Again, whatever milk you like, if you like regular cow's milk, that's fine. If you like coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, whatever works for you. This is your recipe and adjust it to satisfy you. So to begin with, I have, I, I have my raisins all ready. Now I have my baking dish. I'm going to give it a spray. This recipe makes is for an, an eight inch uh, casserole, which will feed approximately six people. Uh, you could double this recipe very easily. So now that we have our bowl all uh, sprayed, we're going to put in our oats. A little bit sticking at the bottom here, that's okay. And our sugar. We're going to put in um, a teaspoon of cinnamon. And about a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg and you can adjust it to whatever you like and so about a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg quarter of a teaspoon of some salt Oops. okay I'm going to set this aside and I have one you can use a, um, a medium size, medium to large size apple. You just need one. And I just pre-cut this in half. I just take a spoon and scoop out the core. Or if you have a fancy little core slicer, you can use that and just dice your apple in there. But I, I just find that the spoon works fine for me. 
if you're working with children, the, the apple core uh, slicer might be the best option for you. And then we're just going to dice it. Remember, always keep your fingers folded in and slice with your knife tip on the board. And we're going to turn it, slice it again. It's a nice big slice. So we'll put that in with our with our oats. Take the second half of the apple. edges so when they bake it doesn't come out with dark messy looking butter spots on your rim. You want it nice and clean and beautiful for mom when you serve it. And I think we're ready for the oven. You might want to just push your apples down a little bit more. But we're all set, ready for the oven. making a fruit salad. Now I have some fresh strawberries and I just um, cut them in half. Now for, we're going to put some grapes in. Now I know young children need their grapes cut in half and I want to show you an easy way to do that. We have our grapes all washed and pulled off the stems sitting on a paper towel and I have a lid to our oatmeal. And all I'm going to do is take my knife and slice right through the grapes. That way you don't have to cut each grape one by one. And that'll go right into the bowl. And I have another bunch of grapes that we're going to do the same thing with. two lids from a deli container that you get from the deli with salads and 
olives and things in. But um, I just had the oatmeal lid handy, so that's what we used. I'm going to put some melon in, so I have some cantaloupe. We'll do a couple slices of that. And slice these up. And you can make up the chunks whatever size you like. If you like it really small, do it small. If you like bigger chunks, I prefer. <coughs> pardon me. I prefer larger chunks. I just think they hold up better when all mixed together. We'll put some um, fresh blueberries in. These have been rinsed and are draining in the original container. And we're going to also put in some orange supremes. I have a, just a whole orange, and we're going to <clears throat> cut it so we have a nice flat surface so it doesn't roll all over. And we're going to uh, cut the skin and the membrane off. You could do the same thing if you want to just peel your orange and section it that way. This way you don't get the membrane. So it just makes it a little nicer looking in your fruit salad. Okay, so get that all peeled. And then you're going to take your knife. You can take a smaller knife. I have a large knife here. I have a little bit of the membrane still on. Get rid of that. And we're going to just go around in between the membrane and take our orange sections off. This takes a minute or so, but it's so worth it. It looks just so nice in your salad without the membrane. And then at the end, you can just squeeze the rest of the juice right into your salad. And our fruit bowl is getting pretty full here. And you can actually do this the night before if you like. Or you can even um, just do all the fruits separate the night before if you don't want to mix it. And then in the morning just put everything in a bowl and mix it together. Okay. Now we're going to take our orange that's left and just squeeze all those nice juices right into your fruit salad. And a little bit of pineapple in it also. Okay. And I'm going to toss our salad a little bit, or you can just leave it the way it is. Um, sometimes I like to just, if I have a clear bowl, I'll layer all my uh, fruits. And it looks very pretty that way too. And we'll just give this a little bit of a toss. We have a pretty full bowl here. Just so we can get a few of the strawberries on the bottom so our guests will know what's in this fruit salad. Some pineapples, chunks on top. Few more blueberries, just for color. And that's our fruit salad. Very quick, very easy. You could buy also fruit that's already peeled. Um, 
and ready to go and just mix your salad together. Thank you. Hi, we're back for our next video and this one is going to be stuffed celery. We need to get our vegetables in and we're going to do two types, one with peanut butter, one with pimento cheese. Uh, you could also use um, almond butter or whatever uh, you like and um, the reason we're doing two is because you know there are people with nut allergies and that would give them an alternative to um, the pimento cheese. So we're going to start with our pimento cheese. I have some uh, uh, shredded cheddar in my bowl. And we're going to put some mayo. And what, all you really need to do is moisten this really well with your, with your mayo. There's really no, you don't have to have a recipe. And we'll just stir that around. And then to this, we're going to add some chopped drained pimentos. Very simple, but very yummy. Okay, so we'll take these up. And this is a fun little task for children to do too, that they get to stuff this. You can give them a little spoon or a little spatula, whatever they like, whatever they're comfortable with. Got to make it fun for them so they'll stay interested in wanting to um, cook along with you. And they seem to also enjoy eating food more when they are able to um, have their hands in on the job. We'll just put those on our plate. And sometimes you're, the canal on the um, celery is a little narrow, so you just need to pile it up and don't be afraid to use your fingers. It's a great tool for the kitchen. Just make sure your hands are clean. And I'm sure in this day and age everybody's very conscious of washing their hands. Line those up, and we have enough for one more piece of stuffed celery. We might as well use that up. We don't want to waste anything either. Okay, so this is our stuffed pimento celery. We'll just clean up for our next peanut butter. And with the peanut butter you can just do it plain. You can use plain peanut butter, um, smooth, or you can use um, creamy. You can use, like I said, whatever kind of nut butter you might like. You could add a little honey to it or just keep it plain. We're just going to do it plain today. And you could, um, after you're through, you could also put um, <clears throat> some um, either either some craisins 
or raisins on top, what they call it? I think they call that ants on a log. Kids always like that. And I'm using crunchy today, crunchy peanut butter. Put um, raisins, craisins on your on your peanut butter, but kids love sprinkles, and this is a good way to get them to eat their their celery and peanut butter. Got a little. This is a new bottle. top off. Okay, so how cute is that for Easter? I have little sprinkles on it. It's a very cute idea. Peanut butter and but this is a quick, easy little recipe that all kids like. And if you really want to get fancy, you could put this in a piping bag with a pastry tip and put little um, stars on. our Mother's Day brunch. We have our baked oatmeal that you can serve with whatever kind of milk is, um, your family uses. You can have some maple syrup or some brown sugar. A little extra cinnamon wouldn't hurt. You could also put some fresh fruit over it and berries. We have our fruit salad which is um, cantaloupe, pineapple, blueberries, strawberries. Um, and if you wanted to put banana in, put it in at the last minute so they don't get brown. And then we have our peanut butter um, stuffed celery with sprinkles and our pimento cheese. And for Mother's Day, some M&Ms and a little um, muffin tin, a cup. And to lift it up and not have to put so much candy in so the kids don't overdo it, a little um, just put a little bit of paper towel or napkin on the bottom and a pinch of orange juice and coffee, tea for the adults. Have a blessed Mother's Day and thank you. Gina Vidrosian here from Moorings Presbyterian Church in Naples, Florida. Today I'm going to make a video for part of our special Mother's Day virtual celebration to show you how to set a flexible, casual table. It could even be outdoors, such as we are right now. We need to apologize for any noise intrusions, such as the neighbor's pool pump, barking dog, the wind, but I'm doing the best I can here. You'll want to decide a color scheme of some sort, and you can use even something like a printed or flowered sheet for your tablecloth. Most people don't use a bare table for a, a festive occasion, but you could use placemats or just get fabric, construction paper, or whatever, and make placemats, or use placemats of your choice. Paper plates are available in all kinds of colors, and I happened to pick fuchsia here because it went with the table. Underneath, I put another plate. For one thing, they're a little flimsy, and secondly, it makes it look fancier like a charger. 
here for the dessert, we have an aluminum muffin cup with pastel peanut M&Ms in a paper cup. And I put a tag on it that said glamorous. You could make a name tag for each person, mom, dad, grandpa, Billy, whomever. That's just made out of an index card. And here's a standard paper cup from the paper plate set. And I put on it thoughtful. Some people don't really like the uh, paper cups because they tip over and so forth. So your options would be to put something that coordinated with your colors, maybe for a water and a juice glass. But with adults around, there's usually tea or coffee. So you could take and put a coffee cup here with a saucer if you happen to have it. If you need additional dishes, you could use white or paper plate ones, for instance, uh, bowls or other little things that you might need for other courses in case something's wet or requires a spoon or has a different texture. This shows plastic silverware, but you can just take that away. Here's a little coffee spoon, a couple of spoons, a couple of forks, a knife, and this is just a standard paper napkin, which could be folded in any direction, or you could use two to fan fold. This is another application to just put another paper napkin here to dress it up a little bit. Here's a little sign that says, We Love Mommy. It could say whatever you want, Grandma's the best, or thank you to all our moms or whatever you want. Most of these flowers just came from the garden and I'll show you some of the possible applications. Another thing I could mention is that kids love sprinkles on anything. So you can put sprinkles on your plate as a decoration and they will think that's fantastic. When I put the M&Ms in there, I put foil first so there aren't actually as many M&Ms as you were hoping to get. This is a plastic bottle with a napkin, some little ribbon, and these flowers came from a thrift store, but they go with the pink color. Another thing about something like this is it could be given as a gift for somebody to take home. This was purchased in a grocery store. I made a little sign in it that said mom, and then I added the pink napkins so that you have the color look of the pink and the turquoise. And then you want to put something underneath so the water doesn't spill out onto the table. So that's one choice. Another thing you could do is to buy a little gift plant for each person and put it on a little tray or even just folded aluminum foil and put it here. This has a little butterfly decor to go with the garden type theme. And then each person could take home a star plant at the end. These came from Williams Magic Garden on Pine Ridge. You could use small vases and make an individual arrangement for each person. And this vase costs 10 cents with a little ribbon and these, of course, came from New York. You don't want your centerpiece to be any taller than this because people can't see past it, especially with little ones. Here's another centerpiece from the yard. And there are just a variety of different things that were chosen from the yard. I put them into tin cans, in water, in a clear dish, and they look pretty good. This is an artificial ivy plant, and I put some of these orange flowers in to go with the orange color here, and uh, I could put more, but you get the point. You can put artificial or real flowers in here just for the day. It dresses things up when you put them on a tray that coordinates. This is just an inexpensive glass Base, which I believe came from the morning's garage sale. And these are just various flowers from the yard to decorate the table. 
you could also do something similar in one of the cups for each place, but you have to be careful they don't tip. And this is another plant which is alive, but doesn't happen to be flowering at the moment. So I just picked some other flowers <clears throat> and put them in there for the day. with each person reading a page or a mini chapter. And this is God Made Mommy Special by Glennis Nellist. And I actually bought it at Publix. And it's just a charming book that everybody would enjoy around the table. So I think that's about it. And you want to show your mothers or the people who were mothers to you in your life, how special they were. And we wish everybody a very happy Mother's Day and a very healthy 2021. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Gina Bedrosian coming to you from Naples, Florida. I'm making a video for the Mother's Day celebration at Moorings Presbyterian Church, Naples, Florida. Our theme is the Proverbs 31 woman living in 2021. What a challenge. Today I'm going to be showing you several ways to make a fancy table for Mother's Day. While it might look difficult or excessively fancy the way that I'm showing you, many things can be put together with what you have at home, a few trips to a thrift store, borrowing from neighbors, and as I'll show you, cutting and picking some plants from your yard. You really don't need to go to any expense. Your decor does not necessarily need to match your drapes or your paint on your wall or that type of thing. Rather think of what would be festive and most enjoyed by your family and something really special for the mothers that you're going to honor. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to be standing up most of the time, so I'm going to switch now to where you'll see the middle of my body, but the different examples. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, Gina Bedrosian here from Moorings Presbyterian Church, Naples, Florida. This video is part of the Moorings Presbyterian Church Mother's Day virtual celebration in which I am going to show several examples of fancy table decor that might be used for Mother's Day brunch or a Mother's Day dinner. You can feel totally flexible about what you do, but I would suggest you start about a week in advance because you have to figure your colors, your uh, various accents, your flowers, make sure you didn't put away a tablecloth with a spot. Consider what you might borrow from a neighbor or a friend. And best of all, try to make it a surprise from your mom or the woman that you're honoring. It's really good to have the table totally set the day before so that on Mother's Day everything goes smoothly. I'm going to show you some examples around a gold and fruit pattern here and then I'll stop the video and move to one that uses a salmon and white pattern. A different video will review a casual setting, such as could be held in your lanai, your breakfast room, or at grandma's house in her senior living place. So this gives a lot of options, and what I'd like you to do is be creative, but don't spend any extra money. Just kind of figure what would work best for your family. Fancy dishes like this usually can't go in the dishwasher. With gold and silver trim, they require special care, as does the crystal. So those are just things to keep in mind when you're planning your time and what you're going to use. When you have young people at the table, particularly little, little people, they could be in booster seats, 
you could put plastic over the tablecloth, or you could change their dishes and silverware appropriate for age. So here we have a glass that can be used as a fruit compote. It could be used as the first course like this. It could be put to the side like this. We also have on the recipe uh, stuffed celery. So that could go here, fruit could go here, the baked oatmeal could go here. If you have coffee or tea with all this, you put it in the middle. And here are a choice of different glasses. This would be like for juice or a smaller serving. This would be for water. And here's a way to make it look a little more fancy. Another thing you can do is use a small bowl or something like this and put a little flower arrangement in front of each person. To make the plate look larger and more special, this is a charger. This is plastic and they come in different colors like white, black, silver, gold, rattan, wood, etc. In this case, silver wouldn't really work because of the gold. The lovely lady who has loaned us these things has gold-plated silverware. Usually you have two spoons, a knife, two forks, and then the napkin. This is a diamond fold of an ironed linen napkin that coordinates with the tablecloth color. This is a cone fold with a gold napkin ring. And this is a fan fold. Another thing you can do with the napkin is to tuck the napkin under the end like this and it looks very fancy as you approach the table. This is a white napkin which generally wouldn't be used with this setting. You can see here that a gold underlay has been chosen to go with the cutwork tablecloth in order to pull the gold together. You could use any color that you want or just let the wood of the table show through. This is a little bit more casual although fine china with the fruit look, it's very appropriate for a brunch. For the center of the table, candlesticks in gold or brass go with this setting. You would usually group them in three of different heights and try to get the candles straight. Some other options would be to pick some flowers from your yard and put them in a vase or some other holder. A long low flower arrangement looks nice and you don't want your flowers too tall because people can't see past them. But there are a variety of things that you can just pick out in the yard for free. Hopefully coordinating your colors. There are some beautiful purple flowers here in Florida, various things like that. You also can buy them at the store. Publix always has what you need. And here's some Proteus that are multicolored and you could take other blooms and put in here if you wanted and these are just in a glass just for an example so that pretty much takes care of this uh, another thing that you could do is you could take a flower arrangement that silk that you have in the house and put that in the center of the table assuming that it goes with your colors and so forth this one is not too, too high, and the colors aren't too bad, and it's just a way to have a quick flower arrangement. I'm going to turn the video off now and switch to the other end of the table, where we're going to show a salmon and white, slightly more casual arrangement. I hope you like it. This is a solid wooden table, as you can see. You could just use placemats, and the placemats can be made of uh, fabric, even fabric that are remnants that you cut and just pink the edges or shred the edges, or you could just fold the edges under and iron them and they don't even need to be sewn. This is a tablecloth in a pretty spring color. A very simple but elegant setting is with stainless steel, a matching ironed napkin, Fold it nicely, but not too fancy, and just your stainless steel. 
This is a basic ironstone. It isn't really fancy or gold or silver or anything like that. For Mother's Day, you don't want to look like New Year's Eve and you don't want it to be heavily in black or too heavy in gold and that kind of thing. This is a very simple goblet and you might want a water glass because orange juice is on the menu. So I'll show you some other ways to dress this up. Here are some cut crystal glasses for water and orange juice. You could put them here. You could also switch out and go with sterling. Here's sterling silverware. And usually you would have two forks, a knife, and two spoons. Then your main entree would go here. For something like fruit, which is on the menu, you could go there. It could go here. And there's also a vegetable on the menu that could go on the plate. Most brunches would involve coffee or tea, and usually you would put a saucer, and with all these things here, you would put the saucer in the middle of the front like this. There are many ways to add flowers, and they can be gotten right from your garden. These are free from the backyard, just in a container here. And if possible, they should go with your color scheme, and this might be just a tiny bit off here. But anyway, this shows one example of flowers. Another type of flowers that you could get from your yard would be here, just the croteus. And you can take these or other flowers and just poke them into there. Here's another little backyard flower arrangement, perfectly free just cut from the backyard and put on water. Some people like to take and make an individual arrangement for each person. That could be in a little small bowl like this, in a little cup like this, and one for each person. Another thing that is sometimes done is to take the flower and use a napkin ring and put the flower, a fern, or a leaf in the napkin ring. I'm going to show you a couple of upgrades here, and that would be upgrading to a white napkin. That's one way to do it. Another thing that you can do with the napkin is to take a folded white napkin and drape it right here over the edge of the table, and then put your plate back on it, and it makes it real pretty over the edge of the table. There are layers that you can put underneath. So I have here a couple of examples of chargers. This is a more casual one. It's a little lighter in color and just larger than the plate. This one is darker in color and a little larger than the plate. This is a handmade wood one that's more casual and it's larger than the plate. Then to go with the kind of salmon color, here's another option that perks up the white dishes quite a bit. You also can put additional dishes on top of this for your different uh, courses and things that you serve, like this, or for example, a beverage could go like this. Something else small could go like this. And as I said, there are lots of ways to do the napkins. Here's another way in which they're fan folded, and you would just lay that to the edge like this. In the daytime, it's not so necessary to use candles, but perhaps your dinner is in the evening. There are lots of ways to do candles. They're usually grouped in groups of three. So here's an example of a group of three candles, uh, tall, excuse me, medium and short. And you could also put a candle on a matching plate to your dishes. Another thing you can do with the candles is to take greenery of your choice from your yard and put it around here 
and that would soften the look of the candles. These are just artificial candles, so there's no fire risk, and I'm sure children would love turning them on. With this type of setting, it really doesn't work to use crystal, gold, or brass um, candlesticks. It's a little bit too fancy for this type of a look. But I hope you like this look, and we'll see what the next example might be. We hope you enjoyed the video. We also invite you to watch our Mother's Day celebration video in which people of all ages share their gifts and talents to honor the women in their lives. Have a blessed day.